algorithms. Do you really need to learn them? That's what I want to talk about in this video because recently someone I'm subscribed to uploaded a video saying algorithms are dead and you don't need to learn them. In particular, he said that you don't need to learn algorithms because artificial intelligence like ChatGPT can create algorithms or snippets of code for you a lot faster than what you could probably do yourself. And he goes on to mention other skills that you're going to probably need to focus on if you want to be a developer. Now, before I move on, I want to preface this by saying that I'm subscribed to him because he provides a lot of valuable information to help developers getting started. He's been in the business for over 30 years and has a lot of experience that he likes to share. Now, who is this developer? It's Uncle Steph. Stefan. Now, most of you who follow this channel probably also follow his channel as well. And if you're not following this channel, then I definitely recommend subscribing to his channel. And of course, if you're not subscribed to this one, subscribe here as well. But let me talk about the issue of algorithms and whether or not he's correct in terms of the value in learning algorithms today. Now, when it comes to the world of algorithms, we have a whole bunch of them. We have sorting algorithms. We have searching algorithms. We have what we know of as the YouTube algorithm, we have the Google algorithm, the Facebook and social media algorithms, Instagram, TikTok, they all use algorithms. Basically, algorithms are a set of instructions that need to be followed. For example, if you're cooking your favorite meal, you have a recipe, that's an algorithm. You follow it, you get good results. And if you don't follow it, then I don't know how good your food's gonna taste. Now, in his video, what he mentions is the fact that ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, they make it so much easier for people just to prompt for a snippet of code. And that is 100% true. ChatGPT or any other of these AI platforms can really help you in terms of developing snippets of code that you could use within your projects. He goes on to mention the fact that, you know, a lot of the big companies for years, they would, you know, survey or they would interview their prospective employees by asking about different types of algorithms and how they would probably try to solve any type of problem that they come up with or they're faced with. And he goes on to mention that it's not really that important nowadays. What's more important to him is that you learn clean code. I agree with that. He says you need to learn about design patterns. I also agree with that. But when it comes to algorithms, this is where I kind of disagree with them because in my opinion, algorithms provide value in terms of the learning process. Now, what I want to do is show you in actual code, you know, why this is valuable, why learning about algorithms, why learn about data structures, why it's valuable to you. Now, this is not going to be a deep dive into algorithms. I have other videos on that if you want to take a look at those, but I'm going to show you two examples here of why learning algorithms can be helpful. All right, so let's jump on the computer over here. All right, so you see here, I have two files open. I have my bubble sort algorithm and I have my selection sort algorithm over here. Now, just to state this off the bat, bubble sort is only for educational purposes. It's not really efficient at all. You're not going to see this being used in real life, but it's good for demonstration purposes. Selection sort is a little bit better, but there are better algorithms out there. All right, so let's take a look at this bubble sort algorithm real quick. Now this one, I'm not using micro time because it can be inconsistent sometimes depending on what processes you have going on in the background. But in this example, I do output some results that show you the performance of this algorithm. All right, so let's take a look at it. First thing we have here, we know we have a PHP file. We have our function bubble sort and we have an array here. Inside of this function, we have our three variables over here and it's gonna be set to the value of count of the array. Then we have our comparisons and our swaps set to zero. Then you see here we have two nested for loops. We have the outer loop and the inner loop. So the outer loop is going to basically be making sure that we go step by step through all the items inside of the array itself. We are initializing i to zero. If i is less than n minus one, then we're going to increment i. And remember n is over here. It's counting the elements in the array. Now for the inner loop, we have for the for loop right here, j is set to zero. While j is less than n minus i minus one, we're gonna increment j. Then we have our comparisons being incremented over here. And you see we have our if conditional right here. Again, not gonna do a too deep dive on this, but I wanna show you what the results are gonna be. Basically, if this condition is true, we're gonna swap the elements. We're gonna echo the swaps. We're gonna return some values. And then outside of the function, this is where it ends right there, we have our array. These are the numbers we're going to want to sort 
and then we're going to output some information to the actual terminal. I'm doing this in terminal because I want to give you a very quick demonstration of how this works. So let me open up my terminal and I'm going to type out PHP bubble sort for and return. It's going to process that. All right. So you see that it now gives us our initial array which is the 64, 34, 25, 12, et cetera. And then it shows us each swap that's taking place each time it's swapped. That's what we're doing over here. So we see the first iteration of the swap, then the second, and it goes all the way down. And we see it takes 14 swaps before it gives us a final array that's fully sorted. It shows us that we had 21 comparisons being done and 14 swaps in total. Now, if we go back over here to selection sort, Again, not using micro time. We have our function. A lot of the information is going to be similar, but over here we get to see that we have a little bit of deviation in terms of how we're coding. And this is for optimization techniques. So we're setting our min index over here. Then we're doing our comparisons. We have a for loop. We have our comparisons being incremented. We have our if conditional. And then we have the swaps elements over here. And then the rest is almost the same. But if I go down here, Remember, with the bubble sort algorithm, we had 21 comparisons and 14 swaps. Now I'll type out PHP selection sort for because I have multiple iterations of these algorithms. And we see the final results. So we have our initial array again being presented there. We see it only had to swap it out four times before it gave us our final array. Comparison 21 and swaps four versus over here, comparison. 21 and swaps 14. So that's about optimization. That's the benefit there. And then what you get to do, especially if you're learning, you could put them side by side and you can start taking a look and analyzing these algorithms. And this is part of the learning process. This is how you can become a better programmer. This is how you develop the programming skills and the thinking skills that you're going to need if you want to excel in this business. All right, so we see that a lot of the stuff is basically similar. Like I mentioned, we have our bubble sort algorithm there, our selection sort algorithm over here. We have our two for loops there, but over here is where we have some optimization with the min index. And then we have the comparisons. We have over here two if conditionals, one of them inside the for loop over here and one outside. We're doing the swapping outside. But then after this change over here, which is different than this change, it's almost basically the same. So with a little bit of tweaking of the code, we're able to save a significant amount of processing time. Now, why does that matter? Well, if you're working on a small data set, the bubble sort algorithm is going to probably be fine. But again, in production environments, in more robust environments where you have a larger data set, you're going to want to make sure your code is optimized. And the best way to do that is to make sure you're using efficient algorithms. Now, Stefan does say that a lot of these languages already has support for algorithms which are already baked into the language itself or some of the libraries. And he's correct. There are a lot of different uh, functions in PHP or in any of the other programming languages that do implement some of these algorithms. So you don't necessarily need to learn how to do these yourself. But the benefit is that you get to learn how to code efficiently. You get to see how a lot of the different structures, a lot of the different syntax, a lot of different constructs work and what you can do in order to build up your program. And it changes the way you think in terms of development and programming in general. Now, mind you, these are two very basic implementations of sorting algorithms. There's a lot of better sorting algorithms out there. And I'm going to probably make some more videos on these because I do believe they provide value. And even though artificial intelligence is doing really well at creating snippets of code that we can utilize ourselves, there's still value here in terms of learning the art of programming. I mean, we want to have a foundational understanding of how code works, of how programming works. Yeah, there's going to be some in the camp that say that there's multiple layers of abstraction anyway. We don't need to know how everything operates. We just have to know how to use our tools. And that might be fine for a lot of people. But how many people do you know have tools in their house they can help them make repairs, but don't really know how to use those tools. So yeah, you got to learn how to use your tools. AI is a tool just like your code editor is a tool. 
But at the same time, you need to have the knowledge. You have to know how to program. You have to develop your programming skills, your critical thinking skills, logic, deductive reasoning. And as of today, there's still limitations in terms of what AI can do. And you want to be able to identify what those limitations are. If you're not well versed in how to code, if you're not well versed in how to program, it's going to be very difficult for you to find those issues that get presented by AI. AI is useful. Definitely use it. It is a tool, but it's not a replacement for you thinking about your program. So I still believe there's a tremendous amount of value in learning about algorithms and data structures. And while there might be a group of people who decide they don't want to learn it, and probably the vast majority of people don't, the reality is those that do learn it will be better off. Now, am I saying that it's more important to learn about algorithms than it is to learn about clean code or design patterns? The answer is no, you gotta learn it all. You gotta learn about what clean code represents. What does it mean to learn about design patterns? What does it mean to learn about building a full functional program? Your architecture, the structure of your files and folders, how each programming language works together. There's a lot you gotta learn, but algorithms definitely have a place in terms of your learning journey. So then why would Uncle Steph recommend not learning algorithms or state that algorithms are dead. It could be because he already knows this stuff like the back of his hand. He's been doing it for 30 years. So for him, he's thinking about the next part of his journey. So learning more about algorithms for him probably doesn't make sense. But for the average person wanting to learn how to code or learn how to program, this is definitely beneficial. It might not be the most important thing, but it definitely has a place. All right, so basically that's it. I just wanted to show you some code. I wanted to show you why I think data structures and algorithms are very valuable in terms of your learning journey and why they are something you should put some effort into learning. Now, Stefan or Uncle Steph, as a lot of people know him, is a channel you should definitely subscribe to. I think he provides a lot of valuable information. He gives you a wealth of insight, but on this one, we could agree to disagree. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or suggestions, leave them down below. And after watching this video, go check out his video just to do a comparison because I could be wrong too. But definitely subscribe to this channel and subscribe to Uncle Steph as well. And I'll catch you in the next video. Happy coding.